Hello everyone. Today we're going to finish this project. Uh, thank you everyone for watching part one. That was really a successful video for me. So let's get back to this. Now we're going to put the motor uh, back on there. Since uh, everything has been soldered properly. So just, just fit in like that. I have to make room uh, for my decoder. Now this engine has these two really really big weights uh, on the on either side of the motor and they are uh, very useful to give the engine weight so it has traction so it can pull quite a few cars so the decoder is going to sit on top of this i cannot go any lower than this i cannot change that so there's a the front part actually won't interfere with the decoder but the back part, I have to make an indentation. Let's just get the decoder so it's going to sit just like that. So I have to take a little bit off, uh, off the back. Honestly, I'm going to take a little bit off the front too to pass these two, uh, I don't know what they are, diodes. So take a little bit off the front and take a little bit off the back. And that will be sweet. So what I'll do is I'll use a hacksaw and I'll mar make uh, these those holes for that. So that will be good. And then I know this motor is not is just not sitting perfectly, so I'm gonna reinstall it till I got it good. Perfect. So I'm gonna put back these two little springs. You don't have to take the motor out to put them back like any springs you have to be careful because they will fly out but that uh, that is not impossible to do there so then when the motor turns uh, the worm gear will turn at the same time I'm not gonna say it's a brilliant design but uh, it works so that's good and I'm gonna get just an extra spring from this uh, this parts unit here. The parts unit has a frame. Sure feels good. Uh, that spring is back uh, this week. I'm filming this on Monday. So this week they're forecasting really good weather uh, for us over here. That will be awesome. I'm sending my little blue car um, to the body shop. To have some rust clean i'm very very proud uh, to to have enough uh, enough money to do that and uh, i'll be posting the video if you're interested of that but uh, that today today it's going in the body shop so really happy of course as you know i do a lot of painting myself you know i do uh, i roller painted my uh, my pickup that was a good project too Sure enjoy uh, driving that pickup but the uh, the little blue Civic it's actually that good that I can uh, I can send it to the body shop and then the trains I custom paint them myself because it's a flat paint so flat paint is actually easy to do uh, Flat paint hides a lot of little mistakes. See, I'll just rotate the motor till it snaps into place and Bob's your uncle. So, everything's coming together. And then we'll just put these back where they go. Now the black on this side and the red on this side, that's the NMRA convention. And these wires will replace the Atlas frame. So they will bring electricity uh, to the decoder. And then on the, uh, on the decoder, on the Atlas frame, there's two uh, uh, metal pads that bring uh, electricity up to the, uh, the decoder. So these replace the motor leads. That's, uh, that is simple. So I'll just put that back uh, in the engine 
and then we'll be ready to do some soldering. I'll use my marker so that when I cut this, I have enough uh, enough material taken out so that I don't have any problems. The same from the front part. I am going to mark it just to be on the safe side. I think that is going to be good. Just double checking everything. Maybe a little bit more off the front there. Couldn't hurt. There. So now I know where my decoder is going to sit. I can start uh, wiring it in also. An important thing to note, there's a path down here for your wires. It will stay out of your worm gear and your drive shaft. So I have to put my wires, let's use the red side so you can see better. There is a path for the wires. They, this way they'll get out of the way and also you can give them a little wiggle room so for when your trucks when your trucks go back and forth you get a little wiggle room so I'm gonna make these as short as I can but this is the path where they would in the past connect to um, the motor directly we're gonna put the decoder between the motor and the track so these will connect right here that looks good now I know how much wire I need I want to make this as neat as possible the same for these wires which connect to, um, to the decoder I'm gonna make them as short as possible now where the motor sits, I have a little bit of room for wires, so that's good. I'm going to be using that. But I'm going to find a way to give them a, a way to pass. They don't interfere with the motor. I don't want that. I test fitted everything. It's very, very tight in there. I'm going to remove the shell so you guys can see. I had to remove quite a bit of the rear, um, the rearmost uh, weight. I had to remove a lot of it, so it became weak along the way. But it's gonna clear. It's in fact, it's so tight under there. I have to remove this electrical tape and replace it with Kepton tape. Also, these uh, these uh, pieces of tape have to be uh, removed. But I shaved enough of it that I can fit the shell and the decoder and everything. The next step is going to be soldering everything. I'm going to pre-tin uh, all these wires and then we'll get busy. So everything's pre-tinned so it should go pretty quickly. So I'll just solder uh, this wire to where the motor goes. I'm not 100% sure uh, which wire should go where, but I think you can program that to change it. Maybe I get lucky and it goes right the first time. While I'm waiting for my uh, iron to warm up, the other day I saw a super cool video uh, chasing the Milwaukee Road and I super enjoyed that. I'm going to try to see if my girlfriend's going to enjoy that too. So maybe put that uh, in the comments below. See if your girlfriend's going to enjoy that video. tough to do if I can't see what I'm doing well that looks good so I'm going to do the second thing for the uh, the same thing for the second wire 
this is what I wanted to have the wires very short so I don't have a mess of wire and also be very very careful that you have kept on tape on everything you do want don't do not want these wires to touch each other or touch anything that can conduct electricity because then you get a short circuit and that's really bad so you want to be careful about that I've got some extra insulation I'm gonna actually uh, get that out and use it this is what I wanted to have the wires very short so I don't have a mess of wire and also be very very careful that you have kept on tape on everything you do want don't do not want these wires to touch each other or touch anything that can conduct electricity because then you get a short circuit and that's really bad so you want to be careful about that I've got some extra insulation I'm gonna actually uh, get that out and use it I bought this from a Home Depot liquid tape so it's a liquid and it dries as uh, just a black uh, insulation so I'm going to use that that's really good stuff I think it takes about five to ten minutes to dry I've got the red side done now I'm going to do the black side and when I do that I try to be very careful about the heat I try to do uh, just the, uh, the smallest amount of heat possible so just one more little uh, solder and then we'll be able to go uh, put that on the track so I do try to keep my heat down Everything's pretty thin, so it should be easy. Perfect. Now we can go try this on the track. I'll always put the uh, the unit on the track before I turn on the power. So that's a good sound. The, uh, the decoder's picking up something. So we're going to do the initial programming. We're going to go uh, program track. Program track enter. Let's see what we got. We're going to do standard. Deco yes, we're in. Decoder number is good. Enter. Enter. Set up short address. Yes. Zero 03 is good this address for sure enter long address so this is zero uh, four two nine enter activate this address yes and then we're gonna skip uh, everything else we we'll even skip that and then escape yes yes we're in so let's try moving forward oh i accidentally got it right really happy with that it has problems uh, with contact with the track but that uh, as it runs it will work itself out That is awesome news, really cool. Still having problems with the contact, but that will work itself out.
because I moved uh, everything around, the contacts might be a little uh, in need of a, a good uh, shakedown. That's okay. That will work itself out. So that's great. Now the other little thing is it sounds like a GP38-2 because it's a GP38-2 decoder. So we can change that. The fan mover you can change it on the programming on the main and the engine can be running so we're going to do that. We're going to give it some exercise. That's going to do it some good. So the prime mover is CV123. We're going to enter a value of zero. So that's the GP38. Enter a value of one. That sounds like uh, maybe an RS3. Let's enter a value of 2. That sounds uh, very much like a EMD again with a turbo. Let's give it a value of 3. Let's give it a value of 4. So that sounds kind of like uh, another uh, GM with a turbo again. Let's try value of 5. Oh, that sounds like a 567. That is perfect. So I'm going to keep that. Oh yeah, I like this. This certainly hits the spot. So I would say that's uh, successful. Really happy with that. Perfect, so now I can put the shell back on. Incidentally, if you want to turn the, uh, the prime mover off, you can just press F8 three times. And then to get the startup sequence, you uh, press F8 again or the headlight. And then you're ready to go. Tuck your wires carefully in there. Don't forget to pass the little coupler uh, through the pocket there. And then just snap that together. And now it's time to run some trains.
I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.